Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5.30. We've got some gloomy weather here in the Valley and in some places around the metro, large puddles are beginning to form with all the rain we're getting. Once it got here, it's been hard to get rid of. A soggy Monday for most of us, so when will it move out? Let's find out from Nathan in your no wait weather. How much longer do we have to deal with this rain, Nathan? Well, it looks like still a couple hours of that rainfall, especially in our northern Minnesota counties, as this is a very broad, uh, low pressure system that is slowly moving through. Looking at our uh, Luther Family Ford Skycam right now, we do have some of those puddles Melanie was talking about on I-29. So keep that in mind if you're going out and about that standing water on roadways and puddles and whatnot will be uh, an issue for us as, long, as well as that splashback from other vehicles uh, driving in front of you. So also keep that in mind if you're planning to head out and about for your Monday evening. But looking at how much rainfall we've seen so far, we have roughly 1.3 inches here in Fargo. But uh, most of us, especially Bemidji, will be picking up more than that 0.38 inches they've seen so far. So we will continue to see these uh, precipitation amounts rise as we go through this evening. But there's the low pressure that we're seeing. You can see in our northern Minnesota counties a lot of green upwind from where you folks are. So expect even more rainfall to continue, especially up in areas like Roseau, Badette, Thief River Falls, Faust and Bemidji all expecting more rainfall for the next couple of hours and uh, even some heavier rainfall down toward Alexandria and Fergus Falls. So we're going to see this trend continue, but luckily, Melanie, I am tracking uh, a dry out for us. Now, break that down for us coming up here in a couple minutes. Okay, good, but don't put away the umbrella and the raincoat yet. Not yet, not yet. Okay. Keep that with you for the rest of this evening. Okay, thanks, Nathan. Okay. And make sure you have the Valley News Live Storm Team Weather app so you can keep up with the weather anytime, anywhere. You'll get the latest forecasts and conditions so you can plan your day. Just search VNL Weather in the App Store and download it for free. If you got caught in the pouring rain this morning, that wasn't the worst of it. Take a look at this video. A neighbor caught this flash of lightning in South Fargo right next door to a garage fire. Valley News Team's Rose Itzkovitz says more from the crew as well as neighbors who experienced the jolt firsthand like a huge flash burst and then I got shocked and we all screamed. They say lightning never strikes the same place twice. It was in my fingers. I was typing on the keyboard at the time and then it just um, kind of big burst. But Fargo Fire says it struck this home while shocking neighbors, <coughs> literally and figuratively. We were shocked. We were just taken back from, you know, how close it was to us, how it affected some one of our neighbors. Latexier's husband, Chris, says this flash of lightning took out his camera and garage door opener. Fargo Fire saying they're looking at a possible electrical issue along with the lightning. But even with a surge protector, there still would have been a fire because of the way uh, it seems that the lightning followed the wiring through the house. And only one residence in this twin home affected. We ended up finding nobody inside. The fire was contained to a, a space in the garage that's near the electrical meter. Happy that nobody was injured and everybody was safe. So thankful. I know she usually works from home, so to see that nobody was there was really, it, it, we were really scared. Fargo Fire saying it's still under investigation and could take weeks to look into. In Fargo, Rose Skivis, Valley News Live. Fargo Fire says the cost of the damage is estimated to be about $20,000. We're told while the main fire was put out within about 10 minutes, Fargo Fire had to wait for the electric company to arrive to turn off the electric meter so firefighters didn't have to worry about being electrocuted. Fargo police are investigating an armed robbery at Royal Liquors. Officers were sent to the liquor store on Main Avenue for a robbery around 1030 Saturday night. Officials say a man entered the store, showed what appeared to be a handgun and demanded money from the employee. He was given some money and then left the store. A 28-year-old man is behind bars after authorities say he assaulted a police officer in Jamestown. Officials say it happened Saturday night around 11 when officers got a call about a man walking down the street and staring into windows. When officers got there, they found 28-year-old Christopher Perman in the parking lot of Casey's General Store. Perman ran away to a bar, then fought with an officer before being arrested. He's in the Stutzman County Correctional Center facing several charges. A man is facing a DUI following a rollover crash that happened early this morning in Devil's Lake. The Ramsey County Sheriff's Office says the vehicle ran off the road and rolled, ejecting the driver, 22-year-old Evan Volk. 
Police say Volk ran from the crash but was eventually arrested for DUI and taken to a hospital with injuries that came from that crash. A woman is recovering following a crash in the Northern Valley. Officials say it happened this morning around 7.30 at the intersection of 4th Avenue South and Chestnut Street. Police say a 15-year-old driver in a Cadillac hit the back end of a Pontiac. The driver of the Pontiac, Mary Hunter, was taken to a hospital. The 15-year-old driver was cited and both cars have significant damage. Meanwhile, the Trump administration is in discussions with Mexico over a safe third-party agreement for migrants seeking to enter the U.S. at the southern border. Mexico has previously rejected the idea of becoming a so-called safe third country, which meant the U.S. bound asylum seekers traveling through Mexico would have to first claim asylum in Mexico. During a briefing at the White House, Acting Commissioner of Customs and Border Protection Mark Morgan praised Mexico for the work they've done on the border. The president has made it very clear that he's going to use every tool available to him and this administration to address this unprecedented crisis at the southern border. We have seen historic agreements and policies put in place by this administration. Officials say more than 65 miles of a new wall are already in place and that 350 to 500 miles of a new wall will be built by the end of 2020. A threat to Fargo North High last week may have caused even more student absences than we originally heard. Fargo Public School said the shooting threat found written on a desk last Tuesday afternoon was not legitimate. Still, we counted 330 parental requests for absence that day, while 54 additional students called in sick. That makes the total nearly 400 absent students up from the 296 we were originally told. The school chalks up the difference to not all absences being verified by the last account we were given. A University of Minnesota Duluth student who was found dead after disappearing over Labor Day weekend died from an apparent drowning. Authorities say 21-year-old Jacob Lavoie's body was recovered around 3 last Friday from the Minnesota Slip near Canal Park. Lavoie was last seen just after midnight on September 1st, leaving Grandma Sports Garden, which is just a couple hundred feet away from the slip. A protest was held after police announced an investigation into an officer-involved shooting that left a 30-year-old man dead near Richfield, Minnesota. According to Edina Police, it happened around 10.30 Saturday night. A police pursuit that began in Edina, Minnesota, ended in an officer-involved shooting near Richfield. Last night, protesters took to the streets and eventually made their way down to Interstate 494. Over 100 protesters were seen marching through the streets. A huge construction project is underway in West Fargo with promises to bring apartments, office and commercial space to Cheyenne Street. Northern Lights is a $35 million mixed-use project of Eagle Ridge Development. The five-story building will have a fitness center, game room, pet washing station, Wi-Fi lounges and electric car charging stations, among other things. Also, a sky bridge will connect Northern Lights with a community development next door.